This presentation is about Speech Analyzer, a acoustic phonetic program designed by SIL. It's freely available on their website, www.sil.org. The first version 3 was available in 2007. The current version was released last year fixed several problems. A new release is coming out in a couple months to fix a couple other problems. Also to add uh, the editing of stereo recordings. The, what I'm talking about today is a test version that we're working on that will have several other new features including processing for texts and word lists providing a split file capability, and exporting for Fieldworks. You'll know this version is the test version because of the letters MSEA in the Help About box. There are two new buttons on the button bar. These features are currently in the 3.1 release. The Redo button and the Edit Segment Size button, just to make them easier to get to. New menu items <clears throat> that are in the test version. A way to add reference numbers, either sequential numbers for using in a text, or numbers can come from a word list if you import the word list with numbers and gloss. There's also a new feature for aligning transcription data. It can be on a single field, which can be done now, but the new feature is that you can import a word list with various transcriptions, and that can be applied to the waveform. There's also a new function of copying phonetic transcription to phonemic. There's also a split file option where each word can be put into a separate file with its own XML data. And there's also phrase level data that can be written out now. There's also a new feature for exporting data for the Fieldworks program. And that will allow data to be put into the audiovisual directory for a person's project and also generate the SFM file that's based on uh, the data inside of Speech Analyzer. The next step is we'll add a lift option which will make it easier to export. The steps in working with a recording are first mark up the recording indicating where separate words are located, enter the reference numbers, and enter the IPA transcription or import something from a word list, work on the phonemics using Phonology Assistant, then you split file to separate the words into individual files, and then import those words in the associated data into Fieldworks. An overview of the markup will be given now. I have three examples, a simple text file, a simple word list, and then a more typical word list. So for processing a text file, Assuming that the recording is a story, some discussion of idiomatic expressions, sentences, or phrases, then the way to uh, mark up that recording is to simply press the playback button. And as time passes, then use the control W keys to insert a boundary. So every time a boundary is noticed, then the start cursor can be moved to that location and control W can be pressed. So as time goes on, more and more words are marked. The phonetic elements marked automatically above it. Once that's been completed, then the reference numbers can be added to that. Again, it can just be a series of numbers in the range of 0 to 10,000. If there happens to be a transcription for the story or sentence, then that can be imported. And by lining up with the reference numbers, the, the gloss can be applied in a transcription field. And there's an example of inputting some words in a gloss transcription field. Then the user would next listen to the recording and hand transcribe the phonetic 
elements. If there is a word list, then the data could also be imported. Once the file has been marked up, the transcription has been put in, the next step is doing phonemics. This file, which can have anywhere from a few to many 50 or 100 words within one recording, can be used within Phonology Assistant. In the project settings, go to Non-Fieldworks Data Sources, and then select the Speech Analyzer WAV file. Phonology Assistant will pick up the data file, which is an XML file. It's better to use WAV recordings because MP3 and WMA are lossy. They'll lose data and you're not able to provide as good analysis. When Phonology Assistant's running, then the data that's in the recording will be shown, phonetic and gloss. And as time passes, some information will be gained in understanding the phonemic processes in the recording. There's a way to copy the phonetic into phonemic within Speech Analyzer. And then that transcription field can be edited. Then as time passes, the phonemic transcription can be updated and also the phonetic. Simply using a right mouse click and edit source record brings a person back to the original recording and that specific word, when that word is changed, then when it's finished and returned back to Phonology Assistant, the data is automatically updated. A second example is a simple word list. It's one in which someone has read a list of words. Each word is spoken once, no reference number is spoken, and no gloss is given. Knowing that, then it's pretty straightforward to segment the data automatically because there are breath groups between each word. Of, of at least a second or so, it's, it's possible to easily mark all of the words, putting in the word breaks and the phonetic symbol representation. Once that's done, and the word list can be used to bring in the reference numbers and automatically apply those. The next step is to bring in the, the gloss transcription and view that. It'll automatically line it up and when it's acceptable, you can see it's done. And then the next step is the same previously. The user can enter the IPA transcription for these words or it can be imported if it's from a survey and it's already been done. Then run Phonology Assistant again and start working on phonemics. This third example is a little more typical and a little more complex than in a typical word list then there's some metadata or a tag in the beginning of the file as things are prepared. The recording is structured, there's a reference number, a word gloss, and then the word is spoken in the language of wider communication and the language helper then pronounces the, the word in his village language three times. So there is then typically the reference phonetic and gloss that's available for markup, but then there are two new fields that can be shown, phrase level one and two. Phrase level one is intended to encompass the entire event in this case. Number one, sky, mukongi, moku, moku, moku. So we have the example of the ref, and the gloss, the LWC, and then the three words that are pronounced. Phrase level two is simply marking the last three words. Moku, moku, moku. Those are, of course, the ones that are of interest for analysis. Once the markup is completed, then again the reference numbers can be brought in and also the glossing. The original way to mark this up is to select all three words as the word that's of interest. And then that's the same as phrase level two, but the next step is to use the transcription editor and to proceed through the file step by step, listening to each word and selectively narrowing down from one to three the three that are pronounced. 
So that is, by pressing the Word and Phrase Level 2 button, it's possible to hear the word that's being selected and the three of them pronounced at Phrase Level 2. This enables a person to quickly decide which one of the three is better and compares them before moving on to the next word. If necessary, and there's a vowel or some other consonant that's not clear, there's a built-in IPA chart. That IPA chart allows the user to move his mouse across the vowels and to hear the IPA sound. And immediately after that, the word that's been selected, that's this highlighted red circle. If the user clicks on the vowel, then it's entered in the transcription window and it can be used for entering IPA characters that the user may not know the key presses for. Once the file has been marked up with phonetic transcription in the same way then it can be opened in Phonology Assistant and the user can begin to confirm their phonetic analysis but start working on the phonemic. Again, as time passes, when the phonetic is fairly well assured, the copy phonetic phon to phonemic and then as time passes, the user can revise his phonemic. That's done by searching and finding replacing within the phonemic transcription field. That concludes the three types of data that a user might work with. The next step is once this work has been done and the transcribing has been done, analysis is completed, then these transcriptions can be formatted using standard format markers or timing information for vowel length or pitch studies can be done. The recordings are done in WAV files and there's an XML data file that contains all the data that's showed in the transcription fields. Recordings can be split into multiple files for use in other programs, for example, Fieldworks. Here's an example of the interlinear record that can be created under SFM export. Either it's a interlinear aligned set of data or it's record based based on each word. Here's an example of a dialog box that allows timing information to be exported and its associated result. The XML file that contains all the data looks like this. Whenever split file is run, the user can choose the location for the data for the, the small smaller word files themselves along with the pitch and phrase and then the result is this is there's two files the data file and the recording the WAV file then for exporting for fieldworks select the fieldwork specific export it will go out and locate the program data directory and then allow the user to select the project of his choice. The export process will then split the data and put it in the audiovisual directory of that project and then also copy the SFM file into the project directory. The SFM file has this structure. It has the lexeme, the gloss, reference number, and the pronunciation file, which is the audio file. Then inside of Fieldworks, that file needs to be imported. The standard format file should be imported. The lexeme needs to be associated with the phonetic writing system and the pronunciation file marker PF needs to be associated. Once that's done, the result is the words are in the lexicon, the gloss is noted at the top, and then the lexeme, which in this case is phonetic, and then the link to the audio file. That's the end of this presentation.